For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because, I mean, your school experience was a bit... If You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is... Uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, She's four. Right. <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think she should be asked more questions that make him think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, To teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out a bit as well, just going, like... <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking, you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? To be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of, like, philosophy on a basic level, that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them out to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn, as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how oh, there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher proper... on Mars. Why not? Because... Yeah. Tell me why not. Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What do you think? The, the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No-one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day? So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No-one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it you has, it's, about... old, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to... Who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you what? know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram... Yeah. ..out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right, say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it... To one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more... Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing up... They haven't got a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right, then, here's a different question. Go on, then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because what... I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is... I think it's there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still handful, millions of people handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer. And yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so you feel is, that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex into wandering say out, wandering London, around. just having wandering around, just picking people off. That's what. Just just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I I don't know. I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know 
dies and that. But all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go on. Uh, Neil, Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and you know, Nora's been, had her head bitten off by a... Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is, we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking, have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. That was at school. Yeah. Um... And it was because, like, it's hassle, isn't it? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How old were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh,. I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? You know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right? So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. I'm saying, what are you on about? So you're, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> So oh. I, I just sort of said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. why are you getting involved? And, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I just, uh, so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What are you wearing? Know, football boots? Just... <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. But, so, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got heads, arm locks, and headlocks. A little head bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that, and it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. <laughs> Did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, could... he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... So yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just, I don't know what they're intending, what, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. So, th this is kind of what we've talked about before, where... He always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this before. And, and the thing that he's talked about is nothing like it. What I mean is, we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And, well, and we, well, we have done. interfered, yeah. yeah. we shouldn't have done. Because it's, mm. it's the same way, like, uh, if, we'd, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, 
No. Won't we have had wings? No, the answer's no. <laughs> Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way... Because he's right, is it? Because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of, like, an ape to man... Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe 100 years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go to there, we go somewhere else. Something that I've always wondered about if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on? What, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006? Or do we go, oh, it's world... It's world new, whatever. Yeah. New world. That is definitely the first priority. You it's have. year one. Right, we've sorted that out. Right, now... Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because it, right. a year might not be the same on this planet. We'd sort that out, right? We'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no. What I'm saying is we, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes for Yeah, the... but we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that, otherwise it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No! I'm we doing wouldn't a 28-hour day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no. the planet to, to, but a day to is, turn, a day and is... a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, the but, sun but once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that? But they don't go... Well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, oh, it's 20 past No, no, no. We use that that because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to, to, I, to I've turn... I've never worried about it like that. I've just always... Well, no, I'm telling you... Well, that's because again. you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, just... that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to... to... Yeah. What would you mean? The way that... What... No, I'm, I'm just saying that's fine and everything. But if when I was born, people said, there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made up how long an hour is. Yeah, we could have made hours shorter and get 26 Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people... Everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Say if there's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like 20 past uh, 25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying... The <laughs> Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want... Uh, there's more interesting territory here. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of, like, go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only... Yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. It's doing yeah, what it but wants. It, it evolved differently, didn't it? Right, you can't get away. <laughs> You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival monkey news one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's diary. You didn't yeah. explain what it was. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But, yeah, but... but it's sort of like going, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm... Uh, it, it really is that thing, that if they go, uh, you go, well, um, Mr Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> Won't happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going, I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating on whistling. The lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? 
Yeah, I was just sat there looking, sort of going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> Excuse, <laughs> yeah. Suzanne. Oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gonna I've... phone my mum. Mm. There was a marathon type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. <laughs> uh, on the same route. Because I, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, and, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old T-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> <laughs> on the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing, a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about ages ago where um, someone was uh, walking down the street. Yeah, and he sees somebody who looked a bit like him. And No, this was weirder than that. Go right. on. Um, he, he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike, whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of is walking down the street, going to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, "That's weird." Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> so Don't it's like a time. Shit. What do you mean? It was him as a kid. This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just... Um, well, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's time, no, but that's so impossible, so don't worry about it. It's just some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right, it was this, uh Monkey? This fella, right, who uh, he had a problem with his eyes, right? Yeah. So uh, he goes to the doctors and he goes, uh, oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they bad them, right? He goes, uh, it was in America, you know, like how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if, if I fix them, it's going to be like 10 grand, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them, can't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse, I can't do anything. Oh, so anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right? And he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back. And uh, there's a little advert there saying cheap doctors, right? <laughs> no, <bollocks. laughs> oh no. no. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's maybe that's what I uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls them up. Woman's there. She's like, wait, what can I do? He goes, I've got bad eyes and that. She says, oh, come in tomorrow, we'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant. I'll see you then. Right? So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see. My eyes have got in really bad state and what have you. Right. I need to have them sorted out. I don't know what you do, whatever you do. Right. I need now, doing. his eyes are so bad, can he see the doctors? He can... um, not really, he's sort really of squinting, squinting and that. But, you know, so, uh, so he's like, uh, do I need to see the doctor to, you know, have a word and tell him what problems? She's like, no, I don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about just, it. No, uh, I'd, I'd be comfortable if it's a just, a just, you know, just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll, we'll get on with it. And <laughs> and like, well, it's, it's, can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well, just before you continue? You know, they don't have opposable thumbs. Now, why are opposable thumbs useful, really? To, to grip something, to do anything like, you know, even simple uh, stuff like writing, so let alone surgery. So without an but opposable thumb... can I just thumb, check now? So if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs. To be a doctor. And without opposable... You couldn't do anything. You but, couldn't, thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up, thanks. 
So anyway, so he's had the injection, he's nodding off and what have you, and his eyes are sort of closing and that, he hears the door open, he, he sort of just sees this little fella coming in, he's like, hello doctor, he's trying to like, make a chat with it, sure. but like, he's just it. nodding off. Uh, no, just, oh, he's never called a doctor. It, he These people have done seven years medical Deeply training. respected people. How could you say, call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need... Especially idle, little airy ones. Well, just idle chit-chat. There's no room for that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, just, it's just, just, yeah, but if, I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp-chat. So anyway, time passes, right? Yeah. Uh, he sort of wakes up and uh, he opens his eyes, right? And uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect. He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like nurse, right? And the nurse comes in because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby, yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's. that's you realise like, the nurse is a panda. That's that's what we do, right? So uh, he said, right. So can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? She's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's he's specialising what he does. Uh, there's a lot of what work. a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please, like, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's a well. lot of there's a lot of like operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave him to it. He's just having a kip. You know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pays the check. Off you go. Go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So uh, he says. Uh, he said, No, I just just what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. So no, like, no fine. leave it. Just leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, leave it. And he's like, it's he's like, check. yeah, but I can't. You know, I, I want to thank him. So he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna wait, opens. They're going to wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did. They woke it up, right? They so, woke it up. Uh, so the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out. Oh. And, and he's like, what's, what's, what's going on here? It's hospital. Why is, the, why is the, uh, a monkey knocking about? Yeah. So the woman, woman said, well, what, what do you mean? He's the doctor. Right? <laughs> so, she, so he's like, you are having a laugh, aren't you? She goes, look, don't complain. You, your eyes are sorted. Yeah. You know, the doctor's done it. What, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. What, well, and he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors. He saw the advert and, and it, said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw it. What as, journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything then about it. Then just play golf. It's absolute bollocks. It's there's no to... way. There's the worst. I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chimp, chimp doctors, cheap. Can, it's easy mistake. 